Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample question discussions. We are in chapter four looking at our sample questions from the ISTQB foundation and we have covered few of them before in our previous tutorial. Now continuing the journey ahead with the remaining questions of chapter four. As a part of chapter four, you will certainly expect theoreticals as well as apply based questions where we will be looking of applying the techniques in the next tutorial. Let's cover the other remaining theoretical questions from this chapter in this tutorial. So the very next question is question number 22. Which one of the following is the description of statement coverage? Now again, first thing is always a tip to you that start exploring whatever you learned about this technique and you have understood about statement testing or coverage. Do not forget statement testing is also known as statement coverage. So there is no difference when they ask you statement testing or statement coverage. Now let's look at the options here. A, it is a metric which is percentage of test cases that have been executed, which means of course the number of test cases, percentage of test cases that have been executed. Of course, the percentage of test cases have been executed, but statement coverage is more about what exactly it is covering in the flowchart. So when it comes to the coverage of the flowchart, it's really important to understand that statement coverage measures the percentage of statements exercised by the test cases, not just the coverage of the test. Because coverage of the test or test case that has been executed can be any number. And that does not return me. If you remember the formula of statement coverage as being called as a definition, the number of statements covered by test cases divided by total number of statements in the code multiplied by 100 which in turn tells me the percentage of statements in the source code which is covered by the test cases, right? And that's what the percentage of statement coverage is. So A is partially not correct or partially correct, however you say it, but it does not have that crucial definition part which you generally need to have. Coming to B, it is metric, uh, which the percentage of the statements in the source code that have been executed. Now, that's something completely correct because we're talking about the percentage of statements which are covered in the source code that have been executed. So it's a measure of number of ex statements exercised by your test divided by total number of statements in the code. So it will give you that percentage and that's absolutely looking correct as of now. Let's look at C. It is a matrix which is the number of statements in the source code that has been executed by the test cases that are passed. It's not really necessarily dependent on the outcome of the test, whether the test passes or fails. But more importantly, it is more about how many tests were designed for covering the number of statements in the given fragment of code. So this is actually too much to say that or beyond the extent of statement coverage definition. Look at D. It is a metric that gives a true or false combination or confirmation if all statements are covered or not. No. That is done by if statement, not the statement coverage. So that's where we totally understand that how exactly to uh, cut short and remove your unwanted options, look forward to it and understand all that thing, what you really need to know. And even if you remember the formula of the statement coverage, which I have given in the tutorial, of course, you have been through that. So that will tell you that, yes, of course, this is the right answer. So putting it all together, the right answer here is B, it is a metric, which is the percentage of statements in the source codes that have been exercised by the tests. Let's look at the next one, question number 23. Which statement about the relationship between statement coverage and decision coverage is true? I think if you remember in my presentation deck in my slide discussions of this tutorial, I've clearly specified that statement that 100% decision coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage. So I think we just have to look here that which one is not meeting that statement and pick up the right answer. So here we got four options like 100% decision coverage also guarantees 100% statement coverage. 100% cover, the statement coverage guarantees 100% decision coverage, 50% decision coverage guarantees 50% statement coverage or decision coverage can never reach 100%. And if you remember straight forward from our discussion, we have a statement that 100% decision coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage always, but not vice versa. 
That means 100% statement coverage does not carry, guarantee 100% decision coverage. So, straightforward here, the right answer here is A, 100% decision coverage also guarantees 100% statement coverage. Let's move to the next question, which is question number 24, coming in from exploratory testing. So for which of the following situation is exploratory testing suitable? Now, again, judging the question first, we need to first understand that the question is asking you the criteria where exploratory testing can be applied. Of course, if you remember, we had three different bases for experience-based techniques where the testers need to have past experience, knowledge about typical defects, and the domain knowledge. These are some of the basic criteria or basis to apply experience-based testing or techniques. Now, further to more, if you don't have formal techniques defined, formal requirements defined, you cannot go with black box. If you don't have access to the code, you cannot go with white box. In that case also, experience-based testing will be applicable. At the same time, if you run out of time, under time pressure and all, you can still apply exploratory testing. So these are all possible answers of this question. But let's look at the option now. The option A says, when the time pressure requires speeding up the execution of test already specified. Now this option looks a pretty tricky one because this is one of the way telling you that yes, when you are under time pressure, you go for the exploratory testing, but absolutely not correct. Why? Exploratory testing is not suitable to speed up the test. It's just that it is something where you cannot run all the test cases and you don't have enough bandwidth to design them, enough bandwidth to uh, perform the test cases in a formal way, you go for it. But it has its own significance. It's not that anytime you want to speed up your work, you go informal. No, there's a logic. If you have the requirements written, you always approach formally. It's just that when you don't have the specification written, that's where you look forward to uh, go for exploratory testing. Exploratory testing is not always the primary approach. Don't forget that, right? Let's look at B. B says when the system is developed incrementally and no test charter is available. Test charter is one of the components for exploratory testing. Without that, you cannot run exploratory testing or this is one of the documentation when you perform or plan for exploratory test. So this is where this is also incorrect. If the test charter isn't available, okay, then how can you do or how can you say exploratory testing is suitable with that? No, not at all. Let's look at the C. The tester are available who have enough knowledge of similar application and technology. That fulfills one of our criteria, that is knowledge about the domain or past experience of similar applications. Yeah, let's look at option D. When an advanced knowledge of system already exists and evidence is to be provided that it should be tested intensively. Now, that's something again contradicting. If you say that a person is, you know, really skilled and you have a lot of information that the system already exists, knowledge about that, and uh, you have already you know, got that what you really need from the uh, knowledge to be testing the system, then of course you don't really have to test it intensively. So exploratory testing alone is not suitable to provide evidences because generally you have minimal documentation there and being, doing exploratory is more of like informal way. So you cannot justify people that what exactly you did in very detailed manner. So in that case, it, it, instead of the evidence is provided in combination with other test methods, so a lone exploratory cannot do that. You need other test methods to be concatenated here in order to give you the right answer. So that's not something which is suitable for exploratory testing. So putting it all together, the right answer here is C, when testers are available who have enough knowledge or similar applications and technology which fulfills the criteria to apply exploratory testing. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. I hope you got a good understanding of these sample questions as well. We'll be getting back to you with more sample questions from chapter 4. So stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.